Okay, we have jumped forward in time. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to waste any of your time looking at me tweaking and fine tuning this until perfection. So instead, I'll just run you through what I did from the previous place that we left off. So let's open this in Flare. And then the first thing that I will do is just hide the bones and play the animation. And you can see it's the same one. And we will get to all of these radial effects later. Um, to begin, I want to talk about the animation of the cape. So you might notice that the actual animation timeline has a lot more keyframes. And all I did was I took all of these bones, so the cape's bones, and I just duplicated them a couple of times. So I just extended the entire animation. And then for each individual um, uh, keyframe, I just slightly changed the position of the bone. So for example, at the second iteration, I might have taken this bone down a little bit and this bone up a little bit. And the reason I did that was just so I can have some slight variation between um, each um, iteration. Because if we only have one loop, it's the same animation again and again and again. If there's a, a, a little bit more in between the beginning and the end, then um, there's more for your eye to get used to. It doesn't look as iterative or as um, repetitive, I guess. And then the other thing I did was for this middle bone, you can see that I've also added some movement for, for that bone. And that was just some translations in the X and Y axis. Just sometimes I take it up, sometimes I take it down. And the reason for that was just so I can get like a slightly better animation when it comes to that little flick at the top or in the center of the, um, of the tail of the cape. And then what I did for the actual design, I just brought my character back and then I just positioned these um, bones to be at the position where the shoulder should be. And then it was literally just playing around until the animation felt right and the positions felt right. And that was literally that. I also grouped all of this together. So now you can see we have this hero and we have the, the uh, cape as a group with the cape and all the bones. And then we have the shape of the head and the shape of the body. And then I just repositioned the um, sitting, um, so the kit sitting. And then I also created this kit shadow. So this is the kit shadow. And all that was is I just used the pen tool and literally just clicked on the stage to add some um, vertices and then just modified them to essentially kind of get the outline of the um, of the kid hero. And um, then for the color for that shadow, it's not as black as the other, it's slightly more gray. And that's just so that there is a little bit of a distinction between the shadow and the characters. And then for the extra cool parts, what I did is I took the background and then hitting Control J, I just duplicated uh, two of those. And the one um, duplicate is the background shadow. So the background shadow has a blend mode, which I'll discuss now. And then it has a, a gradient fill. So it will be easier to actually demonstrate this outside of this. And also I don't want to change too much now because I'm happy with the final design. So let's hide everything. And then I'm gonna drag a rectangle on the stage and I'm gonna give that a black fill, actually maybe a red fill. Then I'm gonna duplicate this rectangle. And for this rectangle, I'm gonna give it a gradient, um, a linear gradient background. So now you can see that we have these two, uh, these two stops. So we have a white stop over here and this black stop. And here we can define where those stops start and where those stops end when it comes to the linear gradient of the background. And then we can also give these colors. So for example, if we select this stop and give it red, then it will shade from red to black. So um, you might have used similar tools in other software. So if you have, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can also set the alpha and the alpha is the opacity. So if you give it a 0% alpha, then it will be see-through. So if we change the color of this rectangle at, at uh, this rectangle that's at the bottom to something like green, you can see that green, the green starts to smudge out um, beneath it. 
And that is because, as I mentioned, the alpha is set to zero. As you can see, it's see-through. And then in a similar way, we can also create radial gradients. And a radial gradient is just that. It's, it's a radial gradient, so it expands in a circular fashion. So we can, for example, decrease the size and expand it. And then using this technique, and then also using blend modes, we can create some cool effects. So for example, overlay would achieve a different um, effect because it essentially blends in a different way with the layers beneath it. So you can play around with these to achieve effects like lighting or transparency or making shadows. And that is exactly what I did. So let's delete these two and bring back everything. So as you can see, here I just have like this light shadow and here I have a background shadow. So without the actual background color, let's not bring back the color, you can literally see that this is just a shape. Like it's a, um, it looks like there's a light at the top and it goes to be more of a shadow at the bottom. And if we bring back the color, the color starts to shine through. And the reason for that, let's get rid of these, the sketch shadow. And the reason for that is because the background light is set to blend lighten and the shadow is set to luminosity. So I was just playing around with the different blend modes until I found a, an effect that I, I liked. And yeah, that is literally that. That is all you need to know. The last kind of cool thing that I did is in animate, in animate, I also animate the position of the radial um, or, or the radius of the, the light and the shadow. So if you go down to the bottom here, you can see that I'm also animating the background shadow and you can see that the full radial gets animated. So to do that, you literally just select the background and then once you get to a keyframe that you want it, uh, to change it, you just click full radial and then you do you make your changes and that gets keyframed. So if you take close note and I hit play, you can see that the shadow and the light animates a little bit. So it moves in and out as the animation heads forward. And in all this time, one thing that I've not mentioned is the fact that you can also animate vertices. So we won't be doing that because that will be too much. But um, in animate mode, if you select a shape and you hit enter, you can see that you have these vertices. And if you change the position of the vertices, you can see that that vertex now gets animated. So that was a dumb example. Like, let's maybe say we want to move the hair slightly. We want, we want this top, this piece of hair just to flap in the wind. So let's push this down slightly. And then here we want it to go up. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, you can animate vertices as well, uh, just as an example. So that is that. We are officially done. I want to undo those. We don't want that. I hope you enjoyed following this tutorial, and I hope you learned something. 